Okay, hello everybody. What I'm doing here is my dad sent me his um, HP laptop. It's a NC6400, it's an HP um, Focus. Da -da 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 -da. There it goes, 6400. And what's interesting about these model laptops is, um, well, first of all, they're business class. They have Core 2s and um, this one has 4 gigs of RAM and I think like an 80 gig um, mechanical drive. And what I'm doing with this one is it doesn't work. When I turn it on, the light's on, but it won't power up. She's dead. And um, there's nothing on the display. Nothing happens. So what we're going to do is... Um, I've already researched it, and these mo these right here, the motherboards go bad uh, because the um, the ATI um, um, display uh, display card, the graphics card, they go bad, and it's not necessarily the card itself goes bad. It's actually the solder joints go bad, and what we got to do is um, um, see if it's the backlighting. You would see. The Windows 7 logo shine up when I um, um, shine this into the screen. So it's not a um, backlighting issue. But um, so, well, there's a couple things I can do. I can heat the heat the um, the motherboard and um, and the re. They call it a BGA reflow. That's where the ball grid array, which is like the little solder joints underneath the chip. You heat them up to make them melt, and then and then once they uh, melt, the card will work again. And you're just reseeding the, um, the solder joints. But the problem is, is that solder, if you've ever done any kind of soldering, you do not reuse solder. They, it just does not work. If, you, if the solder breaks once, you replace it. So you heat the chip, you lift the chip up off the motherboard, you, and then you um, put a stencil underneath the chip, and then you put the you you put new balls on the chip, and you roast it. And then once the, the balls remelt to the chip, you can put the chip back on, and then re epoxy it and everything. And you know it takes you know about twenty five minutes to do that. But how much is your time really worth? Like good tech, will say I'm going to charge you one hundred and fifty bucks, you know, to do that. So it's just got to tear the laptop down, take the motherboard out, redo that. And there's no real guarantee it'll work. You may make a mistake, you, you know? Um, so, so what I've done is, um, and also this particular ATI card is a, um, it's an X 1300, 64 meg, 64 megabyte dedicated. And for, I have on eBay for $27.90, I found a motherboard that has the exact same card but with 128 megabyte. So it's twice the, the graphics memory on it. So what I've done is um, we got that motherboard just because I wanted a better graphics card on here for my dad because they play World of Warcraft on this machine, believe it or not. And um, so we're swapping out the motherboard on this. I'm probably going to repair this motherboard and put it on eBay and get like 15 bucks or 20 bucks for it. So to, to lower the actual cost of the motherboard. And um, so because the solder balls cost almost nothing, maybe like a dollar or less for the solder balls to replace it and and then remelt the motherboard and everything. Get all that on there. And the other thing I'm doing on this is uh, the Core 2 is a 1.86 gigahertz with 2 megabyte cache. Uh, for 15 bucks on eBay, we picked up uh, a 2 gigahertz, 4 megabyte cache. So it's like, um, you know, uh, about 2.6 times the performance capability, I guess. So plus with the added graphics card, they should have um, better luck playing World of Warcraft on here for, um, you know, for 40 bucks, you know, for of parts. And it sure beats buying another laptop. And, um, so, and, um, the one, these right here with the Intel graphics, 
is completely useless. I mean, you can't even you can't even go on YouTube and stream a video. It, they're so bad. But with the ETI, you can actually play World of Warcraft on these. You know, and uh, the 6400, I would say, is the lowest end one I would ever buy in my life. You know, they make great Ubuntu machines or whatever, but the the 6910 or 6930 is a, such a much better machine. And um, so some cat hairs on here for my dad's cat. But we're going to um, tear this thing down. And I may epoxy this right here as a crack in the bezel. I may, I may epoxy that. I don't know. But we're going to tear this thing down and um, swap the motherboard out of it. So I'll show you guys how that's done step by step. Flip this thing over because before you do any kind of work whatsoever on any laptop or computer, you want to make sure it's unplugged and there's no power. So on a laptop, unplug the power here and remove the battery. And on these particular um, um, machines, they have an external battery that can plug in here that attaches to the bottom of the unit that can give you like um, I can at least double your your battery capability. Your battery life, your runtime. So, and what I'm going to do here is attempt to do this with one hand. Oh, well, it's cool. These batteries are only like 15 bucks or so on eBay. And, um, you know, they give you um, quite a bit of runtime for 15 bucks. So, so the first thing you want to do is remove the battery. And then um, what we're going to do is we're all, I'm also going to throw in an old SSD drive in here because the 80 gig mechanical is, um, I would say, uh, not enough performance for, you know, they're kind of ridiculous now. So we're going to take the hard drive out, take the memory out because we don't want to break it when we get the motherboard out. We're going to take the wireless card out just so we don't break anything, break the wires. Or anything, because the antenna wires you don't want to break off the the jack uh, on the wireless card. So you want to take the card out and um, just be careful with it. And then we're also gonna slide out the DVD drive just to get everything out that we need. I don't know if this one has the Bluetooth or not, but if it does, we're gonna pop that out. So cause that's kind of tricky to get out once the motherboard is loose. So we're gonna get it out now. So hang tight. Oh yeah, which I found was interesting was. These are supposed to have like a little caddy that hold the hard drive, and there's no caddy in here. It looks like that the person that set up this machine kind of did like a hillbilly um, installation job. So it worked. It's lasted for years upon years. Yeah, it looks like a Hitachi Death Star 80 gig. Um. Yeah, 7200 RPM, 80 gig, 3 gigabits per second. Not bad. Surely lived a good life. So, interesting. I just wanted to show you guys that. I thought that was kind of silly that somebody went to this extreme to um, use a folded over piece of styrofoam to, um, instead of using the uh, actual... Um, bracket. I thought that was kind of interesting. I just took that off just now and was like, oh, people are silly. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to say about the wireless is I've seen videos where people cut these antenna wires. And I wanted to say why. There's no point. These things right here are on a little jack. And the wire just lifts off like that. I'll try to get down there and show you. It's like a little round jack. Like a little round coaxial jack. There's like a little pressure fitting here. Come on, focus you, focus. There we go. There's like a little jack right there. And that attaches to right there. So they just pop right off. You want to lift them straight up. You don't want to pull too hard. They just pop right off. You don't want to break them. Because if you break that jack into here, it's really hard to get it out. And um, so, but that's just, you know, um, how you get those off. They're real easy, and then put them back on, you just line it up and push it in. That's it. It's pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So, 
I'm yeah, sorry, my camera's having a hard time focusing right now. But um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the keyboard off. Now, there's a little keyboard logo right here with a triangle. So you want to get that screw off. And then there's another one right here, a little keyboard logo. And then there should be a third one right over here. So you want to get that one off. And you'll need a... Um, oh, come on, focus you. You're going to need a set of screws like this to disassemble the rest of the, the laptop. So... Um, so all those screws are set up that way, even down here in the hinge, they'll hold a hinge on or all that way too. So get a good set, get something like that. Don't, don't get the, the big ones because you don't want the, the big head right here. You want the longer, uh, bits so that you can get all the way down inside. If you get the short bits, they don't, they don't reach. You won't be able to get half the screws out. So I'm going to take off um, these screws, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, once you get the, those three screws out, the next step is you want to turn it over and um, open the laptop, of course. And then there's these little tabs right here between the keys. What you want to do is slide them. Wait, are they already down? They're not down, but you want to slide them down like that them down. They're actually little hooks that go underneath the bezel and they hold the keyboard in. And once you do that, the keyboard lifts right off. It's pretty pretty easy here. And then what we're gonna do is where's my light here? There's these uh oh, dim it a little bit. There we go. Pretty hard to do this with one hand. Come on either focus there we go. You just lift this thing up right here. And the wire just pops right out. And then right here, same dealy. You want to lift this up just a fraction of an inch, just until it's loose. And then the, uh, the ribbon wire pops right out. It's so easy. I set that aside. Here's a second stick of memory. We pop this out. Set that aside so we don't damage it. And then there's the motherboard. And uh, the chip that I was talking about that gets damaged is this one up here. This is where the, this is the ATI graphics chip. This is the Intel uh, Northbridge and the Intel CPU. And what happens constantly on these is that the, the fan plugs up right here. So I usually will take care of thing apart and clean between the fan and the heat sink. Because right there, it'll build up with um, dust, and it looks like a, a dryer lint from your clothes dryer. And um, that'll cause this whole thing here to heat up, because it's not getting the cooling it needs. And um, the other thing I do is that I use um, a little bit better thermal paste on these. I never use Arctic Silver, because I've had a lot of bad experiences with Arctic Silver uh, drying out and turning into a powder. And then that'll cause the whole thing here to heat up and burn up. So um, um, I'm a little bit prejudiced against Arctic Silver just because I've had so many bad experiences with it. Um, and what I wanted to show you guys here was is that... Oh, come on, focus you. Yeah. This camera sucks, I'm sorry. Um... This little block right here, that's the memory for the graphics chip. And I don't know why they put it halfway underneath the arm for the um, memory, for the laptop memory here, because that chip gets rather hot. So what I may do, if I have time, is um, I have some thermal adhesive. I'm going to put a square of, blo um, of uh, copper on top of that just to help dissipate the heat. But I don't know if I'll have time for that. But... Um, but here, the, um, the CPU, we're going to swap that out, but we're going to swap it out once we get the new motherboard in. We're not going to do it on this one. And but I'm going to, I don't know if I'll have time to show the reballing of this chip. Uh, but I'm going to reball that chip and then reseed it, make sure it works, and then just put it on eBay and get rid of it. But it should last another four or five years like that. So, um, 
So yeah, so that's the next, that's my step here. What I'm going to do is disassemble the rest of the laptop. Um, I may get the CD-ROM out first, right here. I may get it out first before I disassemble the rest of the laptop. But um, uh, I just wanted to show how to get the keyboard out, how to get access to second stick of memory. And my light's being all tweaking out right now. Um, and some of the laptops have a second wireless card here for wireless um, WAN which is for like a, a 3G card and they're usually like a Sierra wireless whatever and then this is the uh, SIM card for it and um, so pretty much it just opens up you pop the SIM card in there and then you pop it down and you lock it in place it's very simple very simple mechanism so they have instructions here usually so things okay so here's the, the Bluetooth module and oh, I gotta get my phone's ringing. Okay, now one thing I wanted to show here is that this Bluetooth module, the arm is broken off right here on the side. It looks like the last person that worked on this didn't know how to get it out because people think you have to get it out this way. It doesn't work that way. It just lifts up this way. Very simple, very easy to do. A lot of people break them. Like this one looks like it's broken off because it should look like this one, this side. You know, with the the notch on there, and. Um, because it's broken off, it looks like an amateur worked on it before. So, um, anyway, so he just pops off so you don't break it. Okay, after fiddling around with the camera to get it to focus, uh, there's this little hidden rubber dingy right here. Oh, I dropped it. But behind there is a screw. You need to get that one off, and then there's another one on the other side in the front. I already took that boot off, but it looks like this right here, right where the hard drive is at, there's one right here. So I'm going to get that off and find the boots because they fell on the floor. So, um, so hang tight. Oh, okay, tip of advice. Don't do this over the edge of a table. I spent about 10 minutes looking for that little rubber boot, and I cannot find it. So I'm going to look later once this project is done. If not, I have a um, 6320 in the garage for parts that may have a a boot that'll fit this, I hope. So um, don't repeat the same mistake I did. So do it right. Okay, cool. So on this, you need a good screwdriver set. There's, there's five screws. One, two, three, four, and five. You gotta have a good screwdriver set because these screws are very tiny, very thin. And if you have a cheap screwdriver set, you won't be able to get these out at all. So, um, they have to be nice and screwdriver has to be nice and tight in there, otherwise it'll, it'll strip out. Yes. So um, very thin screws. They look they look fat, but they're actually um, paper thin. So there's no no room for the head. So you got to um, make sure you have a really good screwdriver set. And there goes another one on the floor because I'm over the table. So I'm not learning from my own mistakes. So um, let me do this right, and um, I'll be right back after I find that silly screw. Okay, so I got the, the rest of the screws out, and I'm ready to, and I found that screw that fell on the floor. So I'm going to show you guys the correct way to remove this bezel. I haven't taken one of these apart in about two years, so I'm going to have to kind of remember how this works. I'm going to change screwdriver tips because I want a flat tip right here. This one. Make sure I got all the screws out of it first because I don't want to break it. There it goes. Before I continue, I want to show you guys the correct way to get the C drive out. After you get that little screw out there, you just push down and it ejects right out. Okay, on this, once we get the, the screws out, this thing here just pops off with a little bit of um, persuasion. And then there's a um, little connector here we just got to pop off, and that's for the buttons. 
So once we get this off, we set it aside. Now we have full access to this to clean it if we need to. And um, but we're going to continue to dis the um, disassembly process here. And I think I'm going to take this off so we don't damage it. So and then yeah, there's just one screw back here holding the fan on. This is a little arrow. There we go. Magnetic screwdriver. And then the fan. Make sure you plug that back in during the reassembly. That's yeah, pretty plugged up. That's probably what caused it. Yeah, clean that. That one's actually not bad. I've seen them where it filled up this to where the fan couldn't even spin. So this one's actually not that bad, actually. Okay, on this, what I wanted to show was the number one, number two, three, four, five, and number six. And this is usually what you do to when you're reassembling it, is you want to tighten down the screws in that order and so that there's not excessive pressure on these chips because these particular chips are not they don't have that metal covering on them so they can um, if you put too much pressure on a corner you can break a corner so um, so what we do on these is um, we need to be uh, careful when you, when you take it out and put it in because as an example let's say I take off all these screws except this one with the spring underneath here it's going to pull down and lift this up and I'll, you know, chip off that corner. So what we do is that we do like two turns on each one uh, in that order, uh, actually in the opposite order, I should say, uh, to slowly take the pressure off so that this will lift up. And then when you reassemble it, you do the same thing. Do like two turns here on number one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. And you go around and around, do about two turns each until it's tight uh, back up. Because they don't want to break one of those chips, especially these two. Because these two, you, it's not easily changed. Um, we have to remove the battery. We have to remove the the 56k modem, the 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 wireless um, uh, uh, wires. We just got to get them out to the hinge, and then we got to get the hinges off, and then take the screen off. And then I need to show you guys this right here is the for the monitor. It just usually these they just lift right up, you know. Just by looking at them, you can usually tell how they come off. So it's for the display, and then these are the wireless antennas. They just pop off, and then they just pull up here. And then there's a Okay, and then there's a wire that goes up through here, all the way up to right here, which is a microphone. We have to get that off, it's probably from underneath here. And then this is a, either for a touchpad or for the audio, or for a USB port or something, or the, for the lights, I don't know. Gotta get that off, this off, battery. Got to get this off, this connector off. Pretty much any connector you see, you gotta get it off. And then here's another connector we gotta get off. Okay. What we're gonna do is just lift this up. Oh, sorry. Where are we at? Since we're changing the motherboard, you don't have to be incredibly you don't have to be incredibly careful. But at the same time, if I end up selling this motherboard later after repairing it, I don't want to break up all the connectors. And um, so. And that ribbon goes underneath this metal thing going to the power buttons here. But, um, so yeah, so all the connectors we have to get off. And then we can 
there's a couple screws we got to get off. There's one right here. And um, and then once you get all the connectors off, get all the wires out, you can pop the hinges off. And these hinges are nice. Um, they're loose inside because of screen. Like, it has a lot of play in it. And I'm going to show how to fix that too. Okay, so I got the heat sink off using the procedure I showed you earlier. Now, it, I'm actually replacing the CPU with a different one. So I'm not really taking it out. But what I wanted to show you was if you're changing your CPU, there's a, there's a little notch right here. That notch is pointed to lock. There's an unlock position right here. So we're going to turn it to the unlock, and now the chip is free. Like so. So, pop in the new chip, and then lock it back in place. Now this one is a the 1.832 meg 667 megahertz bus. So the the way how this works is the 1.83 is the processor speed. That's to gigahertz. The 2m that's the uh, L2 cache, and then the 667 is the bus speed. And I'm changing it with one that's a 2.0 and 4 megabyte cache in 667. So 667 is the maximum for this motherboard. So, um, but this motherboard, um, people have said they put the 4 meg cache on here and it works fine. So, I'm going to give that a go. And that's all the yucky thermal paste. And this is what the heat sink looks like once I got it off. And I'm going to clean that off probably with WD-40. That's the thermal pad of some sort that um, absorbs the heat and that's the heat sink which I'm going to clean very soon. It looks so bad. Okay, on the hinge there's usually there's at least two screws. So there's one here, one here, and then I got the other ones out already. These ones are on the exterior. There's one here which I took off, one here which I took off, and then there's two here which I took off, and two there which I took off already. So the hinges are usually on there really, really good. So I just have one left on each side which I got to remove. And then I'll, sh um, and then on the re reassembly I'll show you guys how to tighten up these hinges so they're not, so there's no play in them. So it'll well, feel like a new, a new machine, new laptop. So I think there's a silly conspiracy where they're designed to feel loose. Okay, so I got the hinges, the screws out, and what we got to do now is just get the focus. You, here we go. Just got to get the the wires out from underneath the frame. And the same thing here is the other wireless cards. If this one right here has a webcam, there'll be a USB port, little wire that comes here and plugs in the motherboard somewhere, and um, or if they have microphones up here or something. There'll be wires plugging in down here. So on this one's pretty easy, so it should lift right up now and come right off. We're done. We're done with that. So we'll set the screen aside. And then um, this is what we're left with. The frame here should be pretty much loose, except for that one screw I pointed out before. Uh, oh, the frame's bent. I'm broken. That's good to know. And that probably flexed. Yeah. They all probably flexed because the screws weren't tight. Okay, makes sense. And then we have one wire connector there still. We have the one here still I gotta get off. And then that screw. And then this all should lift right off. So I'll get that off and I'll work on it. So hold on. Okay, to get the top bezel off, all I had to do was run my fingernail underneath the seam, and then it just popped it loose, just like that. And what I found is that the microphone there is plugged in underneath this board here, which I can't quite get off just yet without more screws. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop out the microphone, and then I'll fiddle with this later.
So, get that off. That's what the board looks like. So, now there's a couple more screws I found here. And I have to get this card off right here, which I guess runs the PCMCIA. And looks like an IR port there. So, and then there's another screw here, here, here. And I gotta get this off. And then there's probably more screws underneath I gotta get off. And then after I do that, I can swap out the board. Okay, I was able to get the PCMCIA off. It was just the two screws here, here, and then the third screw over here. And then it lifts off from this side. There is a yeah, it's off here, I'll show you. There's this white connector here which connects right there. So when you lift up here, you disconnect it. If you lift up over here, you'll probably break something. So and that's the PCMCI board. Let's set that aside over there. And then yeah, there's another screw here. There's some more connectors. Audio connectors it looks like there. And then um and then there's this black tape covering the audio port. And I'm just going to check to see if there's more screws here. Yeah, so there's one tiny screw right there. So, and more, more connectors. So, uh, I'm going to start tearing this thing apart. And in about a couple minutes, we'll have the board out. Okay, I had a hard time because this modem card... I couldn't quite get to that wire, so I just took it off. And right there is the wire connector on the back of the card. And there's also another connector right here, which I have no idea what, go to, what it goes to. Probably an LED or indicator, or maybe even the modem. But I um, just wanted to uh, show you that sometimes you have to get out extra to get the board out. And I don't even know if I'm missing anything here. It almost feels like something is still holding in. Let me flip it over. Any more screws I miss me now? Something I see. Okay. Alright, let me play with this see if I can get it out without breaking it. With a little bit of moving around, I was able to get the board out. Um, so it was just um, quite tough. And a couple of things I've noticed here is there's a bit of corrosion right here, which is probably what made the board go bad. So I wouldn't rule it out. Oh, yeah, I just peeled that tape off and there's corrosion everywhere, all over here. That. That doesn't look good. I don't like that. I think something spilled on I think my dad forgot to mention to me that, hey, I spilled something on my laptop. And also up here, there's some corrosion right underneath that button. It should be nice and clean like this one, but that one has this corrosion yucky stuff on it. And it's all milky and cloudy over here. So that this power button board is probably still good. I don't know. I'll clean it up, though. And then everything else on the board looks... Good. So, yeah. This board, I cannot sell. I cannot get rid of it and part with it. So, especially these are all corroded, burned off. Looks like they um, melted off or something. So, yep, this board is no good. Officially going to e-waste or gold recovery or whatever, but no good. So here's the new motherboard. Before I fit it in, there's the old one. So I'm going to go ahead and fit the board and set it in place and then start hooking everything up. If you want, just play the video in reverse to you know how to put it back together. Okay, so I... Um, 520s won't work. So I um, hooked up all the wires, reseated the new motherboard, hooked everything up, put the modem back on. We're never going to need it. You, oh, I just need to put the screws in there. The screws are right there. And everything's fitted nice and neat. Okay. It's a little bit of a 
tight squeeze. The, the USB ports don't want to go in. The audio ports right here don't want to go in. And the speaker wires are too close to the board to fit the motherboard down. So you have to fit the board in underneath the wires and underneath it at the same time. And then I used um, my a screwdriver just to push the USB ports into the into the things here to because they're, they're supposed to be countersunk, so they have to fit in there and needs to fit in there. It was a little bit of a tight squeeze, but it fit. I did not break anything that I know of. So I hooked up the buttons again right there. So that's all there. And I got the three screws that hold the motherboard in. There's one there. There's one here. And there's one there. So those are all in. Now it's just reassembling everything. Okay, so I got the PCMCIA board in there and then replaced that one screw and these two screws right there. And I've uh, got the screws in on the modem card. And then now I'm going to place the palm rest back on there and then hook up all the wires that go with that. This one here. And then I also have to fit the microphone back. This one. Put that in there and route the wire for that. So I'll work on that and show you when I'm done. Oh, yeah. The reason why we um, do these videos is so we can learn from each other's mistakes. And I forgot the microphone hooks up underneath the PCMCI board. So I had to yank it out so I can um, 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 reattach that cord. And then what I had to do was use a piece of tape to hold it down. So, um, on other laptop builds, this cord would go on top of the screw hole so when, so it doesn't seat down all the way. And I've had that happen. So I usually pull it tight and go around there, and then I tape it down so the cord never can go on top of that when you're trying to seat it down. Because um, it makes it a nightmare when trying to reassemble and troubleshoot everything when you're done. Because the troubleshooting just won't happen. So, um... So make sure you do that. That really helps. So on this, I just set this on top. I didn't uh, screw it down yet. I just set it on top after getting the the thingy majigger in there, the PCMCIA card, and everything just should snap together like that. And then once we get that far, this is the microphone cord. It, uh, it should, uh, the cord is already kind of like molded into shape already. We just have to push it back into place. Like so. There we go. And then work your way back. There's like little indentations where you push the cord. And, um. Get you. There we go. And that goes in there. This goes into there. This goes into there. Oh, move the camera. That goes into there. There we go. It should look something like that. And I'm probably going to tape it down. And then all of these go back in here. And push that down and lock it in. It goes like that. Battery. That goes back. And then, yeah, this is all broken right here on top. I don't care. Might put some contact cement on there when it's all done. Um, and that's in place. Oh, now it is. And then, um, so now I'm gonna put the CPU, which is right here, in there. Let me get this out. And I'll show you. Okay, so here's the two CPUs. This is the new one, the 2 gigahertz 4 meg 667. That's focus you. 1.83 2 meg 667. So I'm going from a 
1.E to a 2.0, which is not that much, but the 2 make to 4 make will make a huge difference. And then here's the the, the model numbers. That's a T7200 versus a T5600. So, so make sure this is in the unlocked position. Yeah, it is. And then the new CPU. So that corner right here is missing two pins, which matches up right there. So this would go just like that. Pop right in. And that should lock. Just like that. And then it's got to put some thermal compound on there. And that looks nice. There's no chipped corners. So I'm going to put this away. Put it in my closet in case I need a testing CPU. It's make great for testing up there. And then I got to get that thermal pad off the old right here. The old chipset. Oh, there it goes. They make some better stuff, but this is still like a gelatin. So that one's pretty good. Put the hair stuff on it. Yucky. And then, um, and then, um, my start assembling it.